Fabulous. Welcome, everyone. I think that um, I think that most of the people coming tonight must be planning to come on Saturday because there's hardly anyone here. Last week we had a lot here on the Thursday night, so I may not make this all that long. If that's the case, I'm more just touch base. Of the ones who are here, there's you know Barbara and hi Andrew. Um, did any of you not attend last Thursday, or have an, or not basically get? Um, or not coming to the workshop on Saturday. Just let me know. You are on. That's great. Yep. Um, I, I, both of you registered for next for this Saturday to what in the event in two days. The, the, the master class we're running the workshop in two days time. Just trying to get a bit of a sneak preview. Net Barbara's. Yep. Okay. Well, yeah, so depending on how we go tonight, I'll probably just go through and make it quite simple. That was the plan anyway, depending on who came on, and just kind of go back over the um, information. So, Andrew, you actually registered um, for the workshop on Saturday or not at this stage? Like I said, just trying to get a bit of an idea for who here, and this will give me a bit of an idea on how to run this tonight. Okay, so let's get started anyway. So I'm going to assume you're all there last week. So there's no real need to kind of go into great depth of what we've done. So, yeah, no worries, Andrew. Yeah, so as I mentioned, I'll be discussing a little bit about at the end of this, um, just about... Um, the end of the webinar about our upcoming energy reading remote being training on Saturday. So yeah, okay. So now we've got a few more people on. Just type a Y or an N if you definitely if you when you're registered for the workshop this Saturday. And the reason why is if everyone's coming, I'll do a different approach than if some of you aren't yet coming. So that'll help me decide. Okay, yeah, I think everyone's coming in by the looks of it. So what I'll do is a lot of this stuff I want to just rush over, move over quickly. And then what I will more do is go into just show you a little bit more practicalities of what's happening right now and what we're actually doing. So basically, that's what will be happening. There will be an opportunity which we'll be giving at the event. Um, so really, in terms of who this is for, and I'll just quickly move over very fast. We covered this last week. But very simply, there's many ways you can use energy reading and remote viewing. I think the simplest way to explain this one, it's very much more geared towards people who are financially looking to use it for, for monetary reasons and exploring it from a, a mixture of a scientific and energy reading prospect and show you real stuff that can work in real time, doing real thing that you will have to apply yourself to learn in real life in how to use it. The other thing I mentioned here, and I use this, like I use that just only the last two days I used remote viewing to help me work out why I was starting getting excruciating pain in the bottom of my foot. And I managed, and, and I went and got it checked, and pretty much what showed up was exactly um, what basically was going on. So I was like, right, so I was able to get on and address it. So it's absolutely fantastic in terms of being able to save you a lot of money and make your life a lot easier to take back more control of it as we covered all this last week. So I won't go into this stuff but in terms of we covered inflation, fuel prices, all this stuff and how everything is going up in value and how very much um, remote viewing is basically a way an, an energy reading, how you can literally rig the game in your favor by learning to use your intuition and connect with your higher selves. And the biggest thing I wanted to share with that before we go uh, much further is how profound this actually is. Um, because what we, the tools that you'll be learning uh, over the weekend and seeing, they actually help improve your intuition generally because it starts to harness it. And I've noticed that my intuition with financial markets has improved exponentially the more I practice and do this. So you'll even come to the point, some of you, where you would find that you won't actually need to do as much remote viewing in many situations because you will just naturally instinctively know 
and learn how to filter out noise and things that block your intuition and how to get correct energy readings. That's really what we're going to be focusing on is mastering energy reading and learning to how, you know, um, how to harness your intuition so we can see basically how it can be applied to growing your finances. So basically it's like a magic science, but not always. The science has shown that probably futures can change and be human. Our mind can sometimes get in the way. So I covered a lot of that last week. And last week um, we did the energy reading exercise um, for people where we got you to hold your left hand with your palm facing down. And then what we did from there was to deep breathe. And William walked you through this energy reading process in terms of holding your nose, breathing deeply and connecting onto your higher self. So we mentioned how last week we were doing the red cards and the black cards and actually did a practice run to help everyone on the webinar last week actually do that. So we we're able to go in, use the energy reading and use the example of the cards to actually go in there and do that. So what we might even do, for example, is just do a couple more of them right now, just so we can actually practice um, using the energy reading for cards and things like that. And so what I'm going to do now is get William to come back on, because he did this last time, to actually walk you through the card example. Now, those who were there last week, I can assure you we've changed it around this time, so it's not going to be the same last time. And basically, it's going to be a, um, it'll be different this time, it'll be different. So don't, so this way, you can be assured if you were here last week, it will not be the same um, as it was last week. So William, I might just get you to jump on now and basically do this. So come on and energy read it. So um, uh, you'll be controlling the slides again? Yep. So just explain to everyone how this works. So I might, okay. even, might go yeah. back to the other one so you can just walk people through. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So basically, everyone, to those who weren't there last week, what this is is an, an exercise on how to read energy, like um, just a basic starting point. And, and to show you that, how um, that this really works so um the way we'll start this is by holding our, our left hand with our palm facing down fingers pointing away from you not touching anything so now what i want you to do is to take five deep breaths um in through your nose for a count of four hold it for a count of four and then exhale through the mouth for a count of eight and just repeat this breathing process four more times So now what, what I want you to say in your head or out loud, whichever one you choose, connecting to my higher self. So you should feel a slight tingling sensation at the end of your fingertips. This indicates that um, you're now connected. Okay, so now next slide. So it's a bit slow to change. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
I think it may have skipped a, more, a slide or something. No, this is correct. Like for yes, it should typically feel like the energy is traveling out of your oh, hand. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So, um, so um, uh, for for a yes answer, when you ask a question that you know is a yes, then it'll typically feel like the energy is traveling out of your hand and away from you. So, and then for a no, um, it, it will typically feel like the energy is traveling inside towards your left hand or else nothing at all. Okay, so we can even um, try this out right now. So we'll do a quick practice. So I'm going to ask a question and just feel the energy in your hand. Okay, so are we come um, are we currently using Zoom to run this webinar? Just feel which way the energy goes in your left hand. So what so what's everyone feeling in their left hand? Just type it in the text chat. Andrew, no, I think. Barbara, energy moving down the fingers. So the main thing, everyone, is to just not overthink it. The main thing is to just um, uh, continue the, that breathing and, and, and make sure that you're an instrument to the energy that's running through your hand. Yeah, so the quick comment I'll do to help um, just on this one is the reason that we do this calibration, I always do it, is to check if you're off. Because if you're getting a no on an obvious question like this that it is on Zoom, that will tell you you're not calibrating correctly. So it helps weed out mistakes. So that's why we always start with simple yes and no's to help calibrate. And we do that with ourselves. I do it every single time before I do energy reading on anything to make absolutely sure I'm calibrated. Because if I say, for example is my name Warren Black and the energy goes for a no, then I know that my, I'm work, but something is off with my polarity and then I'll just need, need to clear it and practice it. Yeah, that's a good point. The calibration is extremely important. It always, it always makes sure that you get yourself in the correct state and flow at the end, getting the energy to flow properly. Yes, because they actually teach this even in remote viewing when the government was doing their protocols. Very important to filter out the noise. And remote viewers even had protocols to filter out emotional imbalances, um, things going on, processes like that, and even things to minimize the possibility of emotional disruption and calibration. So this is very important. So I'll get William to do a couple more examples of obvious yes and obvious no, so we can get everyone calibrating correctly. And if not, we can just do a quick clearing and get everyone in the right calibration. Yep, sounds great. Okay, so we'll now do the next question. Are you, um, is, uh, is in, am I, along with everyone here on this webinar, currently living on the planet Mars? Now I'll just feel which way the energy is going. And just type in the text chat which way the energy is moving in your hand. If it's moving out, you better teach us how to space travel. Moving out. <laughs> I'm just teasing in. In other words, going out for a yes that we live on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Being facetious. Okay, so Barbara Energy, um, hang on, no, that was the previous one. Um, Fiona down towards my body. Barbara moving towards the palm. Okay, so that's good. So that's a no. Okay, so how about everyone else?
So it's um, Cynthia getting a no. Okay, yeah, so that's good. So we'll now ask um, one more question. So does and th does everyone here have a have a name? And just feel which way the energy is moving, and just type in the text chat what you're getting. Okay, Barbara's getting a yes. Fiona, sensations in finger pads, tips. So is the energy moving out or in, Fiona? So out of fingers. Okay, yeah, so that's a yes then. Okay, so now we'll use some cards here um, to do some real practice. So is the card on the following slide black or red? So uh, now I'll speak black or red and just feel which way the energy goes for both of them. Black. Just feel if, if it's a yes or no. Red. And now just type in the text chat which one you got for yes, which one for no. Since they are both no. Okay, so you may want to recal recalibrate then, Cynthia. You may want to re-ask that question. Um, Barbara, black, yes, red, no. So, um, yeah, just read deeper into it, Cynthia, and you should get an, an answer. So Barbara's got a yes for the black? Yes, so Barbara said yes for black, red, and no for red. So, um, yeah, once, um, some, once as some other people have commented, I'll say my one, the one I got. Okay, so I'll speak my one. Um, so I got black for myself and red um, for no. Looks like you and Barbara were correct. Yep. Well done. Let's try another one. Yeah. So now the next one is the card on the following slide, black or red? Black. Red. And just type in the text chat which one is yes, which one's no. This is the kind of practical stuff along with remote views we'll be doing in the workshop so you can do this. Barbara, black, no, red, yes. What about you, William? So I got yes for red myself and no for black. How about anyone else? William, it was black. What did you so What did you get, William? Did you get black or red? I said red. I think you and Barbara both got red. Yeah. That was interesting. I deliberately did this time two of the same colour because often subconsciously you think that's what's going to happen. You're going to get um, a different colour. Do one more. Okay, so is the card on the following slide black or red? Black. 
Red. Okay, so what's everyone getting? So I, I'm uh, so um so I'm getting red myself. So Fiona, yes for black, no for red, Barbara red, Cynthia red, Andrew, I need a lot more practice for sure. And it's okay. I mean, these things don't happen overnight. It's like anything. The more you practice, the better you get. Um, You got green. Okay, yeah. So um, main thing, Andrew, is just um, uh, to uh, really calibrate. Right? Just um, don't think. <laughs> and just feel into it. And and just speak it out, black or red, and just feel which way the energy moves in your left hand. So people are getting red right now. Okay. Well, here you go. So well done. Yep. Now I'm going to do one as well. And here's one for you. This is a game going right this current minute. Is Manawatu Jets or Hawks Bay Hawks winning the New Zealand women's NBL right at this current moment? So first, Manawatu Jets. And then Hawks Bay Hawks. And then type in the chat what you got. Yeah, so um Cynthia Hawks. Barbara Hawks, Fiona Hawks. And I, I myself got the Hawks. The good news is the Hawks are winning 48 42 at the moment. So you're getting better, everyone. Very well done. Excellent. So this is what you're doing. It's very good to start practicing before you hit probable futures where you're starting to get into that one. Um, doing doing stuff like that. It can be another, it can be very, very effective. So what I might even do is actually do you another one right now. And I'll do a completely bizarre um, Chinese games, basically right now for the China, um, basically soccer right at this moment. So this one. Okay, Hubie Ista. Kran Ranghai. Hubie's ran wrong here, but that's fine. It's your higher self will know. Yeah. So which team are you getting? Yeah, so I myself am getting the wrong high. The correct answer is who by Istar. So well done, Fiona. Who by Istar are winning it 1 0. Here's the good news, though. Thank you, William. And William, as you know, all you need to do is on even money sports games or anything like that, have 55% accuracy. And this is where we often can get into trouble. And I know I face it. I'm naturally a perfectionist and don't like, you know, getting things wrong. And I've had to train myself. But at the end of the day, all that matters is that you make money out of it. That's all that actually matters. And... Even if you can, only, and even if you only get eleven right out of twenty, or you can get fifty-five out of a hundred, you will actually end up 
getting really, really good results. So let's actually use um, a cards or heads or tails example, okay? So I'm, I actually did this the other day where I showed someone. So let's just say you've got the following. So I'm just getting a slide up to do this for you. So you've got the opportunity to do 100 bets of $100 each, okay? That's the basic plan. And the idea is that you will, you know, bet $100 per heads or tails. Odds are 1.90 for heads, 1.90 for tails. So basically, this is what you got. So you, let's say you make 100 bets of $100 each. Um, 100 bets, bet size is $100 for heads and tails, okay? The odds are 1.90 heads, 1.90 tails, okay? So here's the numbers, okay? So let's say that you do 100 bets, and let's just say that you get 55 um, bets right, 45 bets wrong, okay? So what's going to be your profit? So the 55 bets that you won, we you know, winnings is going to be 55 times 100, basically dollars per bet, times 1.90, which equals 10,450, if you do your numbers. Losses or outlay, is basically 100 bets times $100 per bet. $10,000. Net profit. Total profit is $450. Rate of return is 4.5%. That's basically what 450 divided by 10,000. Now, it doesn't seem like much, but let's just say that you're doing that at $1,000 and you do 100 bets per month, okay? That's all you do. And it can be anything. It can be heads or tails. It could, it could also be, you know, on the back of it, on poker, uh, you know, on black or red card. And you can do that at the casino, as an example. Another example where you can actually do this in actual sporting games is what's called over and under. Or over, under in a sports game. So you get like over, um, under right now, for example, on an actual sports game, but it's being played right now, um, basically there. So I'm just gonna see, sometimes the betting site comes up, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I'm trying to get Bet365 site up right now, but it doesn't always come up when I'm running a webinar. Sometimes I think it kind of starts thinking that there's something weird going on. Let's just see if I can do TAB sports betting. Because this is not opening up. Let's see if I can get this one here. So I'm trying at the TAB site and just show you firsthand as an example. Okay, so we've got this here. Let's see if we can find sports basketball. So as an example here, Right now, Detroit Pistons are playing Chicago um, at NBA. There's a 9.5 line, basically 1.90 each. In other words, that Chicago will win by more than nine points, or but they will, uh, and Detroit will cover a spread of nine points, which just basically means if Detroit can basically win, um, even if they lose by, say, eight points, you will win that bet. So they give these handicap bets in obviously bias game. Another one, but the over and under I'm talking about is this. So what's happening here is you've got an over and under right now for 217.5 or an under 217.5, 1.90. So keep in mind, this is like with anything. So, so even if you don't like sports and no, I don't want a sports bet, you might prefer a casino or you might just prefer to use it on cryptos on a on going long or short there's there's all kinds of things that you can do so it could be exactly the same over here with over and under so 
Is everyone following so far? What's happening? Just type a Y if you're following. Just want to make sure everyone's on the same page. Okay, no one's responding. So people are a bit lost. Or are you following okay? Because if you're lost, I'll go back over it. I don't want to make sure everyone's following us. Okay. So first time I've seen the sports page, that's okay. So it doesn't really matter. Let's just kind of... um. Assume it can be any of these situations here. It can be the um, over and under. So what that really means, Fiona, is that in a basketball game, that going back to this example, 217.5. So what that means is provided, let's say that you bet an over 217.5. That means that the total score with both teams combined must beat that. So if, if Chicago win 120 to 100, that would mean that um, you win the bet. Um, if it's only 100 to 90, for example, you'll lose a bet because it's under that particular point. So that's kind of how it works. Um, people make, by the way, very large incomes doing this exact thing, who are a bit of an expert. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change it so you get 60 bets right and 40 wrong. So let's say you get your energy reading really good. And I know people who've made very good incomes doing this because they've been able to get to 60, 40. So this, this allows plenty of slack for you to have a really bad day. So basically this time it comes to 11,400, same outlay. Your profit now is 1,400. Now your total return has jumped up exponentially. And it can keep going and going up. So you can see that the good thing with 60% we could do 10 card readings there. You could get six right and four wrong, which doesn't sound all that great. But when you're doing a lot of them, it can make you, uh, it can actually make you a fairly decent income or make you a bit of extra money. And in fact, Mike, I'm hoping my friend Mike was going to come on Saturday. I've asked him to drop in for a little bit and share. He's been making side income with his personal training after coming to a, a seminar with me in Vegas, where we went to Vegas together. He's been using it for Baccarat. He's been using it for like this kind of stuff and using it on sports games for years now, making a side income. And he said to me, I asked him about his accuracy rate. He goes, I probably get around about 60 to 62% overall. He said on everything that I do. And it works very, very effectively. And the good news is, and you'll be learning in the seminar on Saturday, a lot about how you can even improve your results by various other things. Like on financial markets, you've got the benefit of fundamentals. So for example, like when I remote view gold, like right now, if I remote view gold, which is in a, in a heavy, heavy uptrend and the fundamentals are expecting a higher price rise. If I got, if my remote view suggested that the price would go down, I probably wouldn't place a trade. I would just be cautious placing a trade to go up and hold back. Um, because the basically the fundamentals are saying something different. But let's just say that I've done a remote view and the remote view confirms a trend and, if I, and what the analysts are saying, then I'll, bet, then I'll trade pretty hard. And that's how I've been making some extra income lately um, by doing that, using improving my results by actually combining fundamentals. So, and now, and of course you can improve it even further by using remote viewing. So in actual fact, there's three different things you can do on the same thing. Now, not so much for casino or baccarat because things happen very quickly, but on sports games and financial matters and things like a, a odds an over and under in a basketball game, for example, you can actually use remote viewing to improve your results even more. So let's just say as an example, we did a remote view on the Detroit Pistons over and under game thing. You might get an energy reading and then we might do a remote view. And for a little bit of fun, let's actually do an energy reading on this one first. So I want you to over to do an energy read on over or under 217. This is actually for a future event, which is going to be coming up, one that hasn't even happened yet. So this will be a good little thing. And then tomorrow, we'll be able, you can actually check and see what happens. So I want you to do that and tell me what you come up with.
So the question is, I'll write this out for you. To make this easier. So let me know what you get. Because then I'm going to do something in real time on this. I'm going to get you to later on, we're going to remote view this together as a practice. I'm going to give you a chance to actually try it. So just tell me what you get. It doesn't matter. The main thing is just to get and tell me what you get. I'm going to tally the points like three, like if it's, let's say, so I want to do it. William's going to do it. We're all going to do it. And just let's see what happens. Okay, Fiona, we have one over. Let's go. I've got an over as well. Barbara got an over. Anyone else? If we get a lot of overs and our remote view suggest it, I will actually place a bet on this tomorrow. William over as well. Okay, but it's four overs so far, zero unders. Anyone else who's here? Doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. This fact, quite you, you've got to realize that the whole nature of this, it's not a perfect science. It all that matters is that you can get an advantage. The average sports better who makes millions makes gets about fifty eight percent accuracy between fifty five and fifty eight on this kind of stuff. Just so you know. Okay, so you get two unders. Now that's good. So that can mean that one of two things: either that is just some people are calibrating incorrectly, or it could actually mean that the future is going to be mixed and it's not a clear outcome. So that's actually really useful. So let's just keep that in mind. And we're going to come back to this later on. And we're actually going to do a practice of this. Who would like to actually practice this for a remote view so you can actually see it in real time? Yeah, let's do it. It's fun. It, and, and you can do it. And it'll give you a bit of a sneak preview ready for the weekend. So you can actually do this for the weekend. Excellent. Okay, I'm just having like getting everything ready here. I'm just setting it up to, on the slide so we can do this later on. That's why. Okay. So now what you can do is let's increase our accuracy even more and move through this and just move through these slides relatively quickly. And we'll be covering this in more depth on the weekend. So all I'm going to do for now is give you a bit of a sneak preview ready for the weekend. Really, all we're doing with remote viewing is we're looking at the future and we're recognizing that past, present, future is really just all one energy. That's all it is. And it allows you to tap into this information and understanding that, that basically, imagine that you've got this blanket or parcel or of, of consciousness and energy. And, you know, we label it past, present and future, but in the universe, subconscious mind, it's one energy. Like as an example, right now, Imagine something that happened. Uh, how many of you, if I say to you, remember when COVID first was announced and the first lockdown happened and it started locking down in March 2020? Just type yeah, why if you can instantly think and remember it and it's like as real right now in your mind as if it happened. It's like, yep, you can see it, you can feel it, you're there. Yes, Fiona, yes, absolutely. I'm there straight away. In other words, we can instantly tap into the past. So it isn't the past. It's just another aspect that's why for example time travel there's rumors in the alexandrian mystery school they used to genuinely time travel for that reason um and things like that i can tell you truthfully i don't talk a lot about this with other stuff it's a small one i once had an experience when i time traveled genuinely 
it completely took me by surprise. I didn't expect it. I have no idea how I'd do it again. But I genuinely was back in the Middle Ages and I was in a temple, in the Knights Templar, and I was probably there for about an hour, maybe. And it was like absolutely profound. It was like as real as now. So happened to me in a in a shamanic ceremony. I just time traveled. And when I say it, it wasn't like I imagined and saw it there. I actually was there physically. I could see it there. Um, in my and I I don't know how the heck it happened, but it happened. So in this quantum realm, everything is now, which means we can access information about the past, present, and future and transfer into our conscious awareness to use in our everyday lives. So I mentioned last week, there's so many things you can use it for. This is what the government did, but medical, I'm using it, I've used it heavily. I'm, I even have friends, in fact, I'm so passionate about health and wellness, my plan with my current businesses is, event, is, is as a, is, um, at the moment, I'm finalizing certain things. I'm looking at opening an energetic medicine center where we actually do energetic homeopathy and heal people. It's very, very profoundly successful. Um, I've seen this work very, very accurately. I can prescribe using this more accurately for myself and family and friends when a doctor can read what's going on. And it's you can do questions about your life, I was using it today with a particular girl I was interested in um, or thinking about any way possibly when the great reset will happen, um, protect your money, best model portfolio, what to go into now, what not to, stock market, cryptos, gold and silver, sports betting, anything you could want to. And really, I mentioned, although there's different types, I like to simplify it. The two types are extended or associate. Extended um, I don't use that for financial stuff as much. That's more, for example, where you tune in and you start seeing visions when you go into the future and things like that. And it's not so much a specific target. A good example of an extended remote view is something like, um, you know, do a remote view of, the, of December 2024 in the state of, in the city of New York and tell me what you see. That's an example of extended remote view. It's a general question. And there are remote viewers who do this. There are remote viewers in 2019 that when they did this thing, saw lockdowns of cities and they saw a pandemic. And I think I mentioned that. I got an email about it from a remote viewing community in June 2019. So that's an example of extended. I don't use it for that. Very few remote viewers use extended for financial markets. They use associative. And... It's a it's reason it's a very simple one. And you can get this accuracy doing it generally up to 55, 60. And, and to give you an idea, to be a world-class remote viewer and enter the remote viewing community where you can get paid for it, you need to be prove you can need to prove to them that you can get 72% accuracy on 50-50 outcomes. That's the minimum. So for these guys get more than that. I'm tapping on that at the moment. These are like, for example, this month's results. I've sitting on 73.2%. Um, last month, um, when I was doing it, like based on a lot more sample size, um, for example, in that one, um, my accuracy wasn't as high. It was 67.1 on 167 remote views. But that's still very, very good and very, very profitable, as you can see. So it's taken me a long time to get to that level of accuracy consistently, but I would say between 65 and 70%, I'm pretty confidently tell you I'm now hitting, but it's taken a lot of training to get to that level. My aim is to hit 75% consistently. That's my current aim, which I'm working towards at the moment in reaching. So um, these are examples that I gave last time um, that you can do as outcomes and which I've done. Um, and things like that. And as I mentioned, I will be teaching in the event different ways you can protect and manage risk. That's why I like multiple things ranging from fundamental data. So if I was going to do the price of Bitcoin, I'd be looking at the fundamental charts and what the analysts are saying. I'd be using remote view and energy reading. And if there's a lot of conflicts going on, I might pull back. If there's a bit of uniformity um, with everything, I'll jump in. I've generally found when I've when, when either one of, of those contradicts, the result becomes a lot less accurate. So for example, if I get a strong hit, Bitcoin will go up, but the analysts think the opposite. Sometimes I'll end up, I'll end up being wrong. Sometimes I'll end up being right. If the analysts are saying 
you're overall unsure and I get a strong hit, then very rarely is the remote view wrong. If the analysts are very clear and that, then I pretty much mortgage the house and I go in. I mean, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but you get my idea. What can sabotage remote view? Um, these are the hard things. Honestly, this is where people face their challenges, is sabotage. And you're going to have to... I've never met someone, and if you can go through that, you're very blessed, but very rarely do you not go through a period where you start losing quite a lot or just getting a lot wrong, and that can affect your confidence. And you just have to kind of take the blows. I actually used to try, kind of take breaks and kind of feel a bit down and suppress it. Now, if I have a bad run, like about a few weeks ago, I think I got about eight out of 10 wrong or nine out of 10 wrong in basically in a 10 batch. And I was screaming, I was, I was yelling, I was abusing the team, abusing the remote views, everything. I, I just let it all out because that's part of how you deal with sabotage is you own what's going on. And then after that, I just kind of got back into it because I kept, I reminded myself that it's not 10 remote views that matters, it's a thousand remote views that matter. And this was a temporary aberration. And so with those figures of 67.7% that I showed you as an example, that was actually a period where I had um, some real inaccuracy um, for a period of time. Let's see if I can find it and show you it so you can see it for yourself. Where I had a very strong, yeah, here we are, right here. In fact, I'm exaggerating a little bit. Um, but yeah, I got five right, four wrong. There was a period, though, I'm trying to find where it is, where I got a lot wrong. Um, got a lot wrong. So, yes, yeah, so it's not here. I'm trying to find it for you. Like here, I got three wrong in a row. Um, I got a lot, I got about five right in a row here, three right, right, wrong in a right. Yeah, four wrong in a row here. I think it was actually February maybe where I got that. But yes, there was a period where I had had that. And um, here, for example, again, I had um, one, two, three, four, five, four wrong, uh, things like that. So, you know, you go through all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, as you can see, when I've done 167, honestly, who cares? It doesn't really matter. I mean, it's just a temporary aberration. And you got to kind of do it with a big picture and have that kind of stuff in your mind, you know. And where remote view can be so good, I'll actually show you, you know, even basically certain results, you know, in in, in a simulated account I was running today. I'm running a, a particular simulated thing. This is one particular account. I've got 74% on this particular one. Um, I got a direct hit on this one here. I bet you know, I, I put a bet on that one and one and they won easily. This one here, I got a very, very mixed reading, but I went in because the odds are really good, lost that bet. This one here, interestingly, I got a moderate reading, but um, it was but it was basically analysts were all saying the opposite. They were all predicting the Suns. My remote view suggested the Clippers might win, but it wasn't that strong. There, in fact, I did two remote views. One said the Clippers would win. One said the strong the Suns would win. So I went on a half bet. And as soon as and when the team was winning, I hedged the bet. So I ended up protecting it. So even though two of my street bets were wrong today, I, I broke even. Um, and then whereas the other day when I got some of them right, um, I got both of these right, um, I won on them. So overall, that's why these accounts are winning because the remote view often protects you just as much from losing, um, you know, when you otherwise would have lost. And I had this happen to me the other day, a, a perfect example where I actually um, was protected from doing some bets that would have cost me quite severely. Um, yesterday, I actually won on a, I, I lost on one bet, but I, for whatever reason, my results were less accurate yesterday. I probably got only two of my five remote views were accurate, but I, interestingly, um, actually, no, sorry, three of my five were accurate. Two of them warned me to stay out of a game and I listened to them. So emotional state is one, when you start losing confidence and you lack belief in the system, they've actually proven in tests, but when you've got skeptics around the remote viewing, the results drop off significantly. Um, because really all it is, there's nothing magic about it. It's a reflection of your own consciousness and helps you tap into it. It's all you're doing. Um, overthinking, this happens like we saw that in the card thing. Like reason why some of you would have got that wrong is you probably started overthinking. You started guessing, you know, we've had two reds, maybe the next one will be black, will be black or whatever else. Um, ignoring the process and not being systematic and falling into what's called a psychic trap where you start trying to be a psychic 
which is not being a psychic. Psychics generally do shit at remote viewing, from my experience. Um, just incorrect analysis. I Yesterday, although I got three out of five, when I reviewed it, I always review my results. I really got four out of five because I just mis misread one of them. I called it incorrectly because I had a preconceived idea. I was pretty sure that a certain team would win. And I kind of biased myself. There was only one of the five remote views that I looked at it. And in fact, in the last three days, it's probably only been two out of 15 that I've done, which actually, when I reviewed it, I, I actually got the wrong result. So as my analysis is improving, so are my results. I think I can comfortably get to 80% because when I review, I'm generally over 80% now in terms of my accuracy, but sometimes I just misread them because of preconceived ideas. Um, change in probable future, that's rare. Many, many beginners getting bad results keep using that as an excuse, that's rare. You generally only see that from my experience when you've got a very mixed kind of insanely mixed readings like you get a whole lot of mixed ones and that tells you that there's kind of a lot of unknowns about things personal issues that's why in remote viewing they'd always get the remote views to declare their personal issues and ultimately becoming a successful remote viewer um what was found was a structured protocol was far and away the most effective to avoid noise filters and initial consistency um in summary, to become successful, which I'll be teaching, and I'm really just moving through this quickly, meditation, deep practice, discipline, and I'll be covering this more on the weekend. So strict money management is essential. Manifestation, the correct brain state, um, and we'll be teaching all about that over the weekend. So now what we're going to do is a live remote view practice. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you, and you don't need to use this exact template. You just need to get a piece of paper and a pen, okay? And all you got to do is write the following on the piece of paper. So I'm going to get you the templates. Okay. Just trying to find. There's various little things that people have done with the remote view. But really, I'm going to keep this very, 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 very simple. Um, all I want you to do is this. Ignore the stage one. I want you to write down textures. We're going to keep it very simple. What I mean by textures is like, is it hard? Is it rough? Is it soft? Is it smooth? Is it grainy? Is it like bristly? Like, is it like bristly? Is it like um whatever um is it basically rubbery is it spongy is it bouncy is it soft colors i want to keep this really simple um sounds and dimensions dimensions means round big small circular triangular rectangular um spacious big um triangular um basically curved um oval um cup like all that kind of stuff so just i don't want to go all these other ones just textures really just textures colors and dimensions and also just put sounds in there in case you get like it's quiet or loud or something like that that's number one so just write that down on the paper and make sure you leave room for a sketch because this is more most important okay um and you knock and, and the whole idea of this is that when I tell you to go, you just have to write like without thinking. The rule is you cannot if you think for more than two seconds and can't get anything else and start making it up, that means it's coming from the mind. So you just write textures until you don't get any more. It might be two, three colors, you might do two or three, you might even only get one. Occasionally you only get one color, and it ends up not being very colorful. Um, sounds just get generally you get one or two of those dimensions. Just he puts minimum of four, but look when you get two, three, four, five, six, whatever you get, just right. The secret is it's like being an artist. It's not going to be perfect. I don't think I've ever done a remote view where everything I ever wrote down was accurate. Um, it's like an artist though. You just want to get an overall feel and impression, and then you're going to do a sketch. So to give you an example, so you can see um, how that works. So when I did mine, um,
So this is an example of remote views. This is one I did today on the Astros and Royals. So um, there were two photos that were set up um, for this. And I, I mean, I sometimes handwrite it, sometimes that. Um, in fact, I'll find one that I hand wrote. So I wrote the textures. Don't ignore what I've done there. I've experienced. I just don't do them one by one anymore. But I want you to do that to start. And I drew what I thought. I'll do actually a handwritten one, I'll find, which is probably more better for you. This one here. Um, this was a nice hockey game I won on. Um, so I hand wrote. So what happened here was um, I, ha I hand wrote the details. And all I want to get you to do is just write like textures in one line, dim like dimensions, colors. And then just draw the sketch. And I don't want you to like be an artist. It, you should not spend more than five to 15 seconds, 15 seconds max on the sketch and just write what you get. That's all I drew. And of course, you know, you can see there, I straight away was very confident I got that photo because this one here, I thought, no, this one's got a lot more happening. That one doesn't have much happening. So that's just a bit of an example for you of um, where I did that. So I'm just trying to find another one where I hand wrote it so you can see RV notes there. I know I hand wrote another one I'm trying to find it. It's annoying. I know I did it. Um, yeah, here we are. So here's another one um, I remote viewed. So you can see that had a lot more happening. I had a lot more textures, a lot more colors. So I thought, okay, this photo is going to be a busier one. I had that one. And I had this one here. And, this, and I straight away fought that one. And the reason that I thought that, that I got the men in the circle praying before a sports game or whatever they're doing was I wrote circle, turquoise, centered, and I just drew this thing with lots of different shapes going around in a circle. Okay, so does everyone know what you've got to do? Because what I'm going to get you to do, and I'm going to show, I'm going to set this up right now in front of you. Tomorrow's date, the game is going to be. So you're going to watch me create this in real time right now. I have no idea what these photos are. I'm just going to get a random one. I'm going to put it in here. Detroit versus Chicago Bulls. First reading over versus under 217.5. So that's going to be, and there's going to be two photos in here that we don't know what they are. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get, is I'm going to get you to breathe. And then all I want you to do is write down those three things I told you, okay? And that's basically, I want you to write. So has everyone got that piece of paper, got a pen and written those things down and they're ready to go? Just type a Y if you're ready. If you don't understand, just put a question mark. And Y. Okay, so you're all ready to go. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to do a cool down. And all you've got to do is write whatever comes to you in textures. So yes, Fiona, fill out and then draw. Just draw and let your hand do. Do not think about it. Whatever you do, you just do what comes to you and you don't think about it. So in the example which I did of the angels and the rays, which I showed you yesterday, all I did was I drew what came to me. I just started writing what came to me. So you write textures. So see, I've got some textures here. I've got filmy, I've got smoothed. They're textures. White, angled is a dimension. Circles is a dimension. Oblong is a dimension. Ordinary was a feel of what I was getting. It was something quite ordinary and plain. Dark is a color. High is a dimension. Centered is a dimension. So you just write whatever fucking word you get. And as soon as your mind stops getting the textures, you stop writing. And when it stops getting the colors, um, and things like that. You'll see the photos after, not now. It defeats the purpose. So you will see them, but I want you to start doing them, okay? 
So I'm going to, so all I want you to do now is breathe through the nose for four. Hold for three. And out of your mouth for six. Have your pen in your hand ready to go. And I'm not going to give you long, just so you know. You're only going to get about a minute or two for this. And just keep breathing. And then I'm going to count to three. And when I and as soon as I say three, go is what you're going to be doing. Okay, so don't start writing yet. Now, one last thing I'll tell you. If you get a really clear picture in your mind, then that is what's called a trick AOL. In other words, it's not a remote view. It's something your mind is making up. So if you get a clear picture of a beach, write down beach, whatever you do, because that will affect your remote view. I have lost so much money by getting trapped with these things. If you see a clear picture of, because often you think, oh my God, I know what it's going to be. It's going to be a cup. No, it's a trick. Generally, it's all you get is shadowy senses and vague impressions and words. It's all that come to you. If it's not clear and it's vague and it's sensory, that's correct. If you're getting clear images, write them down at the top, um, basically somewhere on your page. Because once you write it, you get it out of your consciousness and then it won't affect you. If you find you can't get a picture out of your mind, put your pen down for basically five seconds, wait, and then get it back up. So now we're going to count to three and get started. One, two, three, go. Just keep writing and whatever you do. Don't stop your pen unless you get that clear picture. Just keep writing. Don't stop your pen. And if you don't get many, then move to the next category. So I'm going to give you another, as soon as you've finished, if you finish, just type an F. I'll be finishing it very shortly, probably about 15, 20 seconds. But if you happen to finish, I've already finished, just type the, an F. Okay, Barbara's finished. Okay, 10 more seconds. Five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. If you're not getting much, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. For all we know, I've had photos where all it was was a picture of what of, of the moon, and I couldn't want. I wonder why I couldn't get a single thing. So it doesn't matter. Whatever you get, you get. That's the secret. Okay. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to do it as well. I was more focusing for everyone else. So just give me one minute, everyone. And now I'm going to do it as well. So I'm going to go. So I won't say anything for the next minute. Okay, I've now done it as well. It took me 30 seconds. Now let's have a look at the photos. Da -da 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 -da. Get ready. So here's the first photo. 
So for the lady who didn't get anything, who knows? Maybe it's this beetle. The second one, there's more happening. Could be either. Don't go by if there's less or more. Just go by the general feel as to what you got. I got a fairly, I got a fairly clear one myself. Well, not clear. I rate mine in either weak, moderate, strong, or direct hit. I would rate mine a a three for strong. So now I want you to write in the chat which one is closer to your view, the beetle or the windmill. Windmill for Andrew. Cynthia got the beetle. Anyone else? Don't be shy. Barbara Mortar Windmill. Fiona, 50-50 of each. Okay, this is good, everyone. Really good. So, Barbara had the windmill. Fiona had the windmill. Cindy got the beetle. Andrew got the windmill. I got a strong hit on the windmill. So, on the energy reads, what's interesting is it was 4-2 for the over. But for the game... So far, the remote views is actually for an under. So I'll just put this in a different color. Anyone else? Did you do it, William, or you didn't get a chance? Fiona had 50-50 on each. So that's interesting. In that situation, therefore, I would trust more the windmill but I would probably be cautious. I would probably place a bet on that base on what I've got. I don't normally do a lot of over and unders, but there you go. Who found that intensely interesting? I'm finishing up now, by the way. I just realized I've got a, <laughs> my staff are reminding me that I've got another class coming in any minute. It is, and you can practice these a lot. So who's definitely now coming to the workshop? Who would miss it for the world? Uh -huh. So that was my one, by the way, for, for it there. So I kind of went more with the windmill. I wouldn't slate my life in it, but the colors tur turquoise, green, smooth, firmish, the red's the only thing that concerns me. It's interesting that others had that. That tells me it's not a it's not a guaranteed probable future. So this one, I would probably bet on it, but I would be a little bit cautious. I'm gonna I would probably look at what the analysts are saying um, on this one if I was taking this seriously as a sports bet before I'd go on it. Because overall, I'm definitely saying thinking I got the windmill, but the red and things like the firmish makes me go mm, possibly the beetle. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you very much. I have another thing to do. So I will see you um, at the event on Saturday. Thanks, everyone. Look forward to seeing you there. And bye for now.